based on the Vesper theory. This is a continuation from my Vesper theory uh, introduction that I have. And so let's just recap a few things that we've uh, discussed in the introduction videos. First step, we want to be able to draw the electron configuration of the molecule in question. So what's important is that we have the ability to identify the valence electrons found in each molecule. So if we look at each example, we want to be able to draw the number of electron dots that are found um, around each atom and then be able to connect them with either single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds, and be able to identify if there are any unshared pairs of electrons. Once we've done, once we've been able to draw the electron dot con configuration, we want to be able to identify the number of regions of high density electrons. And this is all based from the central atom. So I'm going to underline in blue the central atom in each one of these molecules. So we have boron, sulfur, carbon, sulfur, this iodine, this nitrogen, this carbon. Once we've done that, we've identified what our central atom is, then from that central atom, we want to identify all the bonded pairs of electrons. And if we look at the first example, here's a bonded pair, here's a bonded pair, here's a bonded pair. So we have a total of three bonded pairs and zero unshared pairs to give us a total of three numbers or three regions of high density electrons or high electron densities. We look at the next example, we have one, two single bonds count as a bonded pair. Double bonds count as also one bonded pair. So we have a total of three bonded pairs, but zero unshared pairs. In the next example, we have a triple bond and a single bond. So we have a total of two bonded pairs and zero unshared pairs. Let's jump to um, this middle one here, the NH3. We have our central atom. We have one bond two bonds, three bonds. So we have a total of three bonded pairs of electrons. And we have here, let's uh, erase all this so you can see it. We have a pair of unshared pair of electrons. So we have one unpaired. So we add them together to give us four. So therefore this would have four regions of high electron densities. If we look at the last example here, we have iodine, the central atom, this iodine. So we have one bond, two bonds. So we have two bonded. We have one unshared pair, two unshared pairs, three unshared pairs to give us a total of five regions of high density electrons. And this number is what's going to help us be able to decipher which arrangement is the most stable. So, once they have been counted, refer to the following table of regions of high density electrons. So what we're going to be looking at, let me just move this away from us. We're going to be looking for the number of regions of high density electrons. So, we have, if we have two regions of high density electrons, it means the best arrangement would be linear in shape, straight line. Of the, uh, what the formula is going to look like? is AX squared. And now I'm using letters that are, we, these are not the letters that you're going to find on the periodic table. The letter A, as we have here at the bottom, is going to represent whatever the central atom is. So this is going to be the central atom. The E, as we're going to see ultimately, is going to represent the unshared pair of electrons. So notice how we have just the formula AX squared, which means we might have um, whatever the, the atoms represent, but A is going to represent whatever is going to be our central atom, and the X is going to represent the atoms on the, around it, surrounding the central atom. And here we're looking at one central atom and two outer atoms that are connected to that one central atom. And this will have no unshared pairs of electrons. So 
number, if we have three regions of high density electrons, our best arrangement is trigonal planar. And formulas or molecular formulas will have uh, the following look to it. So we'll have A being our central atom and three surrounding atoms with no unshared pairs, or we're going to have one central atom, two surrounding atoms, and one electron or a pair, an unshared pair of electrons. And we'll look at examples in a bit. If we have four regions, we have a tetrahedral shape, and the following formulas are going to look as follows. We're going to have A, our central atom, and either four surrounding atoms with no unshared pairs, three surrounding atoms with one unshared pair, or two surrounding atoms with two unshared electron pairs. If we have five regions, our shape will be trigonal bipyramidal, and the formulas are as follows. We can either have our central atom with five surrounding atoms, one central atom and four surrounding atoms with a pair of unshared electrons surrounding the central atom, one central atom and three surrounding atoms, but with two unshared pairs surrounding this central atom. And finally, the other possibility, or the last possibility, is one central atom with two surrounding atoms and three unshared pairs of electrons surrounding, again, the central atom. Remember, all these uh, unshared electron pairs are always found with whatever is our central atom. And the last example, if we have six regions of high density uh, electrons, our shape is octahedral, and the formulas are one of the three following. Central atom again, with six surrounding atoms. Central atom with five surrounding atoms and one unshared pair. And the last one is one central atom with four surrounding atoms and two uh, unshared electron pairs surrounding it. So let's look at a couple of examples um, of linear, uh, of, of atoms that have two uh, regions. B, E, C, L, 2. So notice here the formula. B, E will be our central atom surrounding and two surrounding atoms. Our next example here, we have B as our central atom and three surrounding atoms, or we can have one central atom and two surrounding atoms. And what we have here, this is going to have an extra pair of unshared electrons when we draw our electron configuration. For tetrahedral, four regions, here we have an example, our central atom, central atom, central atom. We draw in blue the outer atom, so we have four outer atoms, three, but if we have three if we have three outer atoms, then that means we have a pair of unshared electrons. And the last one here, if we have one central atom and two surrounding atoms, it means that we have one, two, three, four. So we have two pairs of unshared electrons. For five regional, we have one of these four possibilities. One central, five surrounding, no unshared pairs. One central, four surrounding, one unshared pair. One central, three surrounding, and two unshared pairs. And the last one is, well, one of them is going to represent the central atom. And it's going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, um, which uh, six electrons. But in, in other words, we're going to have three unshared electron pairs. And for our last example, the octahedral central atom, six surrounding atoms, no unshared pairs. Central atom, five surrounding, but with one unshared pair around the central atom. And the last example, one central atom, four surrounding atoms, and two pairs 
of unshared electrons.